he set up an executive order where he declared and decreed that you can no longer traffic human beings. Taking the body as surety for a debt that the body does not owe is considered human trafficking. My administration is 100% committed to eradicating human trafficking from the earth. My administration is fighting these monsters, persecuting and prosecuting them and locking them away for a very, very long time. We've had a tremendous track record, the best track record in a long time. He also moved the Federal Reserve into the Treasury and started to clean up the Treasury as of 3-15-2020. And when he did that, he brought back the IRS. The IRS was a fake service. It was always meant to be a, a department, an IRD, inside the treasury and he's been cleaning all that up so there is an internal revenue department that you can use to report anyone who's trafficking your person so this all sounds like hearsay right you're like oh my gosh there's a lot to take in so let me tell you i'm going to report a story to you a good friend of mine named kevin super brave patriot from missouri here's how he started to apply this executive order Okay, so he, during the time of COVID, got apprehended in a hospital. He was there to see his son because his son was injured. And four police officers to the ground because he wouldn't wear a face diaper. They stole his wallet out of his back pocket, and then they filed a claim in the court against him. So what Kevin did, and what a lot of people are doing, is they're responding to these court cases. Again, it's a foreign corporation trying to contract with you. They're not a court. They're a foreign corporation, an administrative court, trying to contract with you and what they're really trying to do is con you into drawing money from your SESTA KV because what they do when they create a new court case is they create a trust in your name through a for through another foreign brokerage they create a trust in your name and they place three bonds inside that trust a bid a performance and a payment bond now stay with me stay with me guys so what Kevin did was anytime you're offered anytime someone comes and they offer to contract with you you have to respond within a certain number of days, like 30 days. So he responded with a conditional acceptance, meaning sure, I'll agree to contract with you upon burden of proof. Meaning if you can prove that what you say is true, right? And so um, so they can't, they can't prove that not wearing a mask causes harm, right? So they have the burden of proof. So, um, so at this point in time, he also responded to them with a counter presentment or a counter affidavit. And he said, because I have proof that shows that four police officers detained me, threw me to the ground, stole my wallet, etc., and accused me of something I didn't do. So here's my true bill. It's $13 million per pol like police officer. Um, uh, I think it's USC Title 18 that gives you all these uh, amounts. But it was $13 million per police officer times four. And here's my evidence to prove it. And also here's a payment schedule for when you can pay me. And he not only did this counter presentment with this foreign corporation, this court, but he also filed it with the foreign corporation known as his county. So he went through a magistrate, AKA a, uh, a notary. I don't know if everybody realizes this, but every notary is a public judge, a magistrate, and they can't rule over you. They can only see what documents are being presented. They're supposed to observe which documents are being presented and sign for them. So then he sent it through the post office, which is actually our courts. So this proves that he has a paper trail because he got it notarized. Then he went through the court, or sorry, through the court of the US Postal Service. Then he sent it to the county clerk. So all he's doing is just creating a paper trail. Then he also recorded it with the new internal revenue department at the US Treasury. So through the U.S. Treasury Inspector General. Now I'm gonna provide a whole list of links of departments that you can now file these claims with whenever someone is uh, trafficking your human, your, your body <laughs> and trying to contract with you because they can't do that anymore. They're not gonna be able to get away with this anymore. Okay, so then the court saw that he was playing hardball. So they, what did they do? They totally ignored his counter presentment and all that stuff. They hoped it would go away. And they spawned up a new court case and they put his middle initial in the court case. So he didn't, he wouldn't have caught it if he didn't catch the middle initial. That's how sneaky they are. And so what did he do? He responded with all the same steps and he sent them uh, a notice that the bill was due. 
the, the bill was due. It, he, the, the time had gone by, the 13 million times four, which is now double because he's got him in fraud on a second court case, has all doubled. So what did the court do? Well, they knew they were in huge trouble. All this is filed. It's all filed. Both presentments, both court cases are all filed through the county clerk and with the internal re-venue department which is actually supposed to work on, they're, they're, they're working on our side now, guys. You want to make them your best friend because they're actually the ones that are going to help us manage balancing both sides of the ledger between our SESTA KV trust and our public accounts or our debt accounts. So think of it as credit and debt. Okay, so so then the court, this is how sneaky they are, and you got another playbook. The courts basically filed bankruptcy. The, this, this foreign corporation filed bankruptcy and they ran for the hills. He could no longer find the four judges that had been assigned to these two fake cases. He couldn't find the, the lawyers, the prosecuting attorneys ran, the court clerk ran, even the brokerage company that started all these trusts in his name ran because they knew that he was auditing them. And so next thing you know, what do they do? But for three months, three weeks later, they spawned up a new foreign corporation with a new LLC and a new Dun & Bradstreet number. And they literally changed the address, but it's the same exact courthouse, it's just a side door. So that's how they work. They just spawn up a whole new facade. As soon as they're caught, they spawn up a new facade and they act like no one can see them. But they're right there in plain sight. So one of the first things you want to do anytime you're dealing with any foreign adversary, in this case, the court, ask them who they are. Ask them for their oath of office. Find out who are you and who do you work for. And if they send you an oath of office that is all caps corporation with an all caps constitution or bylaws, that means you're dealing with foreign corporation. And a lot of people that Anne LaFleur is working with are getting out of their court cases by simply going in and conditionally accepting any contract with, upon burden of proof of jurisdiction. In other words, if you get pulled over for a, for a traffic violation or something like that, uh, you can respond to the court through the magistrate and through the post office. Don't go, don't give a special appearance, just respond and say, I will conditionally accept your, your opportunity or your offer to contract upon burden, burden of proof of jurisdiction. And they don't have jurisdiction over you because they're trying to operate they're trying to operate um, as human traffickers. They're they're operating in maritime, and you're you're standing in your honor, and you're saying, "No, I really don't want to participate in your fraud." So, okay, so so this goes deep. Um, so that's one way that people are starting to stand up. And one of the things I've been really concerned about is like, what happens if this summer, like at the end of August, they start to try to force these things on our kids in order to go back to public school? in the public school system accepting and the parents are accepting benefits that's how they look at us they look at us as belligerent citizens accepting benefits for their state or corporate their foreign corporate um offers and we're accepting the benefit of, of free education so by doing that, they get to set all the rules. And obviously you and I both know we're dependent on these schools by now. You've got 50 million children throughout the country of the US in state, you know, public state schools. And that means over hundred million parents. And if they were to drop a requirement like that on us overnight, like within a week, um, we too many children would end up taking it. So we've got to have a strategy. We've got to have a plan. And I think one of the best strategies is to report these states for human trafficking. Okay, I really do. I think this is the strategy. We've got to start reporting all these companies. So banks, state, state organizations or foreign corporations, uh, counties, cities, um, like I said, I mean, you're talking about every time they, they ever opened a bank account, they were drawing money from your SESTA KB. And there are more auditing tools becoming available to us. So like a QSIP report allows you to pull uh, back um, the amount of money that they drew from you in order to open your mortgage, for example. But that QSIP report costs like $250 to run the report and it's not... It's not like a line item ledger. So in other words, I ordered one of those for my home and it said that it was like over 8 billion was pulled out. So I can't tell if that was because they bundled my mortgage in some cluster or if that's the amount that they pulled out of my, my assessed KV. But it's, there are tools out there and I'm saying just like, look for them. Start to draw that into this new reality. Like look for these ways to audit because pretty soon, like not only can we report them to these agencies now but pretty soon these guys are going to just be completely exposed for what they're doing um okay so i also want to just report back what's happening on the field 
with regard to what some of these states are doing to steal properties from people. And this is stuff that's not making the mainstream news, so you don't even know what's happening. Yeah, that's but exactly what But there are a lot of people, doing. like, if they buy their house outright, let's say they've paid off their mortgage, um, what the state will do is they'll hire a brokerage company to pay their taxes for you under the table. They won't send you a bill for taxes. They're paying these taxes under the table. And if they pay your taxes for over three years, they can lay claim to your home. So then you wouldn't even know that they owned your home until you died and your uh, all of your estate went into. So they pay your property tax. She is right. Then they lay claim to that property that your house sits on. Um, a probate. So it's really, really important now that we learn how to establish our estate. And Anne LaFleur and Fearless Floyd are on YouTube and they are running classes and courses. Again, I'll provide the links below. Um, and, and you can find this video on Rumble at Our Great Awakening. I'm on Our Great Awakening on Rumble. And so you can find all these links, where to report this nefarious activity, where to um, learn more about how to set up your estate, uh, how to learn more about how to get your land patent. Because that's the other thing is like, guys, we, we are kind of in a, a big, I don't know, we're kind of bound by all these uh, fraudulent contracts. A lot of people might say to me, well, the Sesta KV was built on fraud. I never gave informed consent. Therefore, I don't participate in the fraud. And then I was like, well, but they're still trafficking you. And until we stand up against it, uh, this is how they can take over the world. And we don't, we don't even know what's happening, you know? So unfortunately, because all these companies and corporations are working in lockstep, and unfortunately, because every single lawyer in America are working for a foreign agency. They're right. all agents in black. And we got to come forth on that. So like if you're a lawyer and you want to start working, you know, in good faith, it would be better for you to launch uh, a lawful firm where you're going to operate in good faith and get get with Anne LaFleur and some of these people that are actually standing up to the courts and getting people out of court cases because these courts have no jurisdiction over us. They really don't. They can't prove jurisdiction. Um, I also have some videos that I'm checking out that are going viral of people realizing that if you don't respond in the court to your last name, Mr. Anderson, hello, Mr. Anderson, if you don't respond and say, no, I'm not Mr. Anderson, I'm Michelle. <laughs> and they'll be like, are you not Mr. Anderson? No, I'm Michelle. <laughs> anyway, if you reply like that and you stand up to your lawyer and you fire your lawyer because your lawyer can't represent you unless he represents you as a corporation. So the lawyer, you, you almost, we have to learn how to stand up without lawyers and send up to these these uh, courts. And that's why the lawyers out there that want to turn to the Alliance and come to the good side could really learn how to uh, coach people on how to stand in their own honor and how to protect their own assets. And that's why I keep saying, guys, it's time for us to really back up against each other. This is not a time to war with each other. It's not a time to be mad about this information. It's a time to wrap our heads around it, to watch the wins that are happening on the front lines, to make those videos go as viral as possible, and to keep talking about this. You know, form our ecclesias, keep talking about this topic because we're about to reign in a new kingdom of heaven on earth. We are the ones who...